All right, Psalm 28. Let's call this one the path to mercy as this psalm will start out. To you, O Lord, I call my rock. Be not deaf to me, lest if you be silent to me, I become like those who go down to the pit. David appreciating not only the need for God to listen to the things that he's saying, but if God listens and doesn't counsel him, it doesn't matter. David realizes that his life is dependent upon understanding the ways in which God will counsel him into a deeper understanding of life and its problems. And so he is going to go on to say in verse two, hear the voice of my pleas for mercy, which much like we saw back in a previous psalm where he initially started out commenting on his past commitment to integrity, but ended up talking about his future commitment to continue to move with integrity. Now he is talking about here in the early portion of Psalm 28, his pleas for mercy, praying that God will accept them at the end or toward the end of the Psalm. He is going to thank God or appreciate the fact that he is confident that God has accepted his pleas for mercy. In the meantime, he is once again, like we've seen in previous chapters, going to ask God not to sweep him away with the wicked, this time focusing not simply on the wicked in general, but the type of wicked we've talked about in previous chapters, those with an unhealthy disconnect between their personality and their character, as he is going to talk about the kind of wicked who smile at their neighbors while their hearts are actually calculating evil against them understanding that there is a difference between people who want to simply see the wicked held accountable for the things that they have done wrong. I'm not sure there's anything wrong with wanting to see the consequences of wrongdoing eventually catch up to people, especially when it seems like they're getting away with it. But David is seemingly talking about those who want to see him fall into misfortune, whether he's done wrong or not much like we saw back in the book of Job, where when he fell into misfortune, it exposed in his friends a joy at his misfortune, even when it had nothing to do with anything that Job had done wrong. And so David is going to go on to say, for those who seem to be outwardly pleasant towards me, however, find joy in my misfortune, regardless of whether or not I've done wrong, give to them according to their ways. As he is going to go on, as we said, toward the end of the Psalm, to thank God for hearing his own pleas for mercy. As we often see in the Psalms, David is going to conclude with not simply focusing on giving thanks and acknowledging God for the things that he's done for him. He is going to say that God has been his strength personally, but he is going to thank God for the way in which he has been the strength of his people in general. As he goes on to conclude by asking God to be their shepherd and carry them forever understanding that what most caught my attention in this psalm might have been the way in which David, once again, described as a man after God's own heart. Now in Psalm 28, after already in Psalm 26, having asked God not to sweep him away with the wicked, did not consider his status with God some sort of right or entitlement, understanding that no matter how much good he might have done, to the degree that he partnered in the works of the wicked, he put himself in danger of being swept away in the consequences coming for the wicked. However, there was an additional way in which David might have been swept away with the wicked. It doesn't literally say it's because he might have been tempted to partner up with him because there are times when if you look at the story of David and Abigail, David was almost swept up in the desire for vengeance against the wicked. And so my prayer for you is my prayer for me, that to the degree that life puts pressure on us to partner up with people who are engaged in shady things, that we not jeopardize all that God has accomplished through us for the convenience of acceptance. Moreover, to the degree we find the strength to stand opposed to those who are doing wrong, may God give us the additional strength to overcome the provocation to retaliate against those who are doing wrong either to us or the people we love.